Hey, what's up? So I did a debate recently with my friend Marcus Hutchins, and it was a really cool conversation. We basically had a great discussion, and uh, I think we learned a lot about each other's positions. But we were still very much in opposite camps, and we still remain so right now. So I wanted to post something because uh, I've been working a whole bunch with uh, a bunch of projects using AI for them over the last like week and a half. And I just wanted to sort of offer as evidence and what I believe is pretty convincing evidence that what I was saying in that video is absolutely correct. So I basically have done a bunch of projects that would have required probably dozens or hundreds of consulting hours. If I were to pay like developers to go and actually do this work, it would have taken them so long to do this. So I, I want to step through some of this work. So the first one here is retagging my entire site. So I've got like 3,062 posts over 27 years. And if you look at these tags here, culture, technology, society, business, uh, cybersecurity, philosophy, Look at the steps that you have to actually do to re-tag a website, okay? I basically had AI go and read all 3,060, well, this is the 62nd post, but go read all these posts, okay? Understand what they're about so that you can apply the 20 tags that we have, okay? And then, and then of course, push the changes, whatever, that, that's automation possible, um, but let's just only look at number one. Okay. Go read 3000 blog posts. How many people would I have to assign to do that? And obviously I could do it and I was doing it like haphazardly one at a time or whatever, but I couldn't set aside a couple of weeks to go reread all my posts and retag them. Okay. So just, I, I would argue it already takes intelligence to read a blog post and assign tags to it. Just to read a blog post and figure out what it's about, I think automatically hits the bar for intelligence, right? And, and that's really what the core debate was between Marcus and I is like, is this intelligent or not? And he, he's basically saying AI is autocomplete and it's definitely not intelligent. And I'm saying kind of the opposite. All right, so the next one is bring my images home. So over the years, I've had like these images hosted on tons of other like CMSs. And uh, it's just been nasty, right? So I've got them on Beehive. I mean, this is like probably 10 or 15 different platform changes. So all the URLs are different. They're pointing to different places. Some of them are broken. Some of them, you know, you know, don't work anymore, don't exist anymore, whatever. So go find all the instances of images that pointed to any place other than directly, you know, canonical at my own domain. Uh, download that image. Okay, go get it. Rename it, resize it, optimize it, put it in my new location where it's supposed to be. Then go find the blog post that it applies to and update the blog post and then push the changes. How many of those things, <laughs> how many of those things require intelligence? I, I mean, you could, this is not an automatable thing. I mean, I, I guess some parts of this are, right? Um, I mean, I, I guess, I guess in some ways it download the image. Okay. F ultimately, this is like a renaming thing. And I mentioned this earlier. This is like a renaming thing. And it's the type of thing that's going to be extremely fragile and likely to break. So it, it's not a trivial thing. And, you know, writing the code to the, do this, and then you have to test it. You have to make sure you have a backup. Like all of that, like, again, this is non-trivial. You have to give it to an actual team or a really skilled developer and then have them come back, you know, dozens of hours later and probably hundreds or thousands of dollars that you spend on having them do this because it is not trivial. I would say that it doesn't purely require human intelligence. It requires a bunch of coding. So I would say it requires the human intelligence to actually write the code to do it. Okay, next one, converting super nasty HTML bundles to Markdown. 
Okay, so this is an example of a post that came over from Markdown because it was a newsletter. And look at this. You've got these nested divs, nested spans. This is trying to preserve the content formatting of the newsletter, right? And it just goes on and on. <clears throat> like these things are just massive, massive bundles of crap. And so I couldn't just go in there and edit something. And I, I damn sure wasn't getting where I was supposed to be, which was the clean markdown, right? This is the whole point of moving to my new static site is I have very, very clean um, markdown now. And so any of those posts that came over from Beehive or from a bunch of other places, they're just really nasty, full of HTML, like deprecated old HTML from other platforms, but especially from Beehive. So what this thing is doing is actually going and getting that entire thing, reading the entire thing, understanding what is nasty HTML wrapper content. And by the way, these things are massive, right? So it's not just a tiny little thing. Um, I mean, we're talking about hundreds or thousands of lines of code um, j just to have the content inside of there somewhere. So you have to read the entire thing. You have to pull out the content. You have to not get rid of any of the content. You can't lose any, you can't change any. And then you have to write a completely new markdown file. Oh, and mark it up with my new styling and formatting for the site. Like I have this thing on the left here that's called an aside. It, it has to know to go and do that. So again, I've got to give this to a consultancy. I've got to give this to someone on Upwork or on Fiverr. So looking at this list here, these do require, I would argue, intelligence completely rewrite the content. The, the key point here that requires the intelligence, you have to read the thing and know the difference between content and wrapper and bloat and crap that needs to be taken out. That is not an automatable thing. You can't write a script to do that, right? So, so the takeaway for me here is, oh, and by the way, this is an example of the, uh, this is an example of like, uh, in, in this case, it was Claude Code uh, that was running. But this is a, just an example for people who don't know me who are like, hey, is, he, is this really happening? <laughs> it, you know, did AI actually do this for them? Yes, this is uh, some, some of the evidence for that. But anyone who's done technical work around maintaining a website or complex HTML will instantly recognize, in my, my opinion, how tedious and nasty this work is and how much it requires an actual human to do, right? Even for the tasks that somebody could code, it would still be crap work, right? Um, if you gave it to someone and like, it's likely to mess up your site because they will get one of the scripts wrong. It'll rewrite the wrong thing, whatever. Like, I'm sure if you've done this before, you totally get what I'm saying. It also did the testing afterwards. It, plus it wrote the code for the translations and the testing. Then it executed it. Then it monitored the status and showed me how much, how, how much time it was taking to get done. And it, it's just insane. So hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars of work. And this is just me doing it part-time over a few days, just, just telling AI to go do it. And it just did it itself. There was some steering, obviously, but not during the task. During the task, it was absolutely doing those things that required intelligence. So my argument here, and I would say my challenge to Marcus, and more importantly than Marcus and myself, it's, it's more so to people who think like Marcus, okay? I don't see how it's possible to argue that this is not intelligence. What we just did here, what I just showed you here, is not possible to do without either manual coding from an actual human, right? Or manual actual work, forget the coding, you can't automate it. So you can't just code around it in most of the cases that I showed. Manual work to go read and understand a thing so you can apply the correct tags. What other technology can read and understand a post and determine what tags apply to it? 
don't you have to understand if it's philosophy or if it's information security or whatever, right? You, you can't just grep and said, right? You can't just count the number of instances of the word that is not meaning, right? So I, I would argue technology capable of doing cognitive tasks that could previously only be done by a human. I think that is a good definition of AI. And I think a good definition of intelligence is being able to take your knowledge that you have and apply it to new situations. Okay. So in this case, the knowledge that it has is what the word infosec means, what the word cybersecurity means, what the word AI means. It has to read the knowledge. It has to read the content of the page and determine based on its knowledge this is a new situation, right? Because it's never seen this blog post before. A new situation is it's presented with a new input, a new challenge, a new problem, and it's determining whether or not it's going to apply one or more of these 20 different tags, right? So I would say that is clearly intelligence, right? Th that's my definition for intelligence. And this is my definition for AI here. Now, Marcus disagrees with this. He thinks that it's more of a Intelligence is more of a completely new thing, like EMC uh, E equals MC squared, or the invention of the wheel or whatever, right? And I've got multiple problems with this. One is it devalues 99% of cognitive work being done by people. Most people are not inventing new physics, right? And it also implies that, well, yeah, but for the people who are doing that 99.9%, .9%, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but this, it feels like this is the argument that he's making. The people who are just, you know, reading blog posts and assigning tags and, you know, doing regular office work, they're not doing real intelligence things. They're not doing real creative things. And it's just iterative or whatever, you know, like what he's accusing AI of being. And I'm like, that's what people are getting paid for. The whole reason I'm concerned about this is because this tech can do that work, right? I don't care about this definition because, you know, some random reason to care about a technical definition. Who cares about a technical definition? The reason I care about the definition is because how it interacts with the actual world. The way this interacts with the actual world is that AI that did all that work, which I just showed, that can now replace a team of developers getting paid hundreds or thousands of dollars to do that work, right? Or a team of consultants or, or whatever you want to call them. People who have to go and actually do this coding and actually do this reading and actually do this tag assigning. This mundane work that, like that, that mundane work is what most people do, right? It's how they pay their bills. It's how they feed their families. So, this is why I'm concerned about this. This is why I am objecting to calling this autocomplete. Autocomplete. I mean, can autocomplete do what we just saw? No, it can't. So I, I think he is essentially defining intelligence in such a restrictive way that it's making it useless, right? And I, I don't think we need a new word for this. Like, wh what do you call it when you know, let, let's say there's a new technology, forget AI, let, let's just call it a new technology that can replace, you know, 80 to 99% of cognitive work done by humans, which we won't call intelligence, right, for his sake. What do you want to call that? Like cognitive work replacement technology? I don't see the need for a new word. It's called AI. We should just use that word.